Hey guys, Ryan said Lake St. Clair Fishing Guide. So um, it's winter time up here in Michigan. I uh, can't do a whole lot of fishing right now, at least in the open water. Um, and I kind of stumbled onto a little arts and crafts project I thought I would share with you. Um, at the end of each season, I always had a kind of a cluster of reels that I wanted to clean um, and, uh, and take care of over the winter time. And then even during the season, sometimes I'd be swapping reels out for different situations, different clients that I have. And I just ended up with drawers full of reels or reels kind of cluttering my shelves and not really an organized way to keep track of what I have. Um, and so I just kind of thought up a little project that something that could be cheap, something I could put up quickly. And I kind of came up with this here. So, um, I want to take some time today, kind of show you how to do it. The whole project costs less than 60 bucks in terms of hardware. Uh, the most expensive part is these kind of 3M hooks here. Other than that, it's a pretty cheap project. It took uh, less than an hour to put it together. Um, and it really helps me keep things organized. Uh, what I really like about this thing as well, I got this board from Home Depot and it's actually a whiteboard. So I actually write on there sometimes what pound test I've got on there. If I put some fresh line on it and I want to keep track of that, um, I can put uh, pound test on there or write whatever other notes I want on there too. So a uh, handy little deal kind of accents the uh, the fishing cave and uh, it helps me keep a little bit more organized. So I'm going to take a few minutes today and show you how to make this real quick and hopefully it's useful for you. All right, so I want to walk you through the hardware real quick first. Um, got this board here at Home Depot and it's a uh, two foot by four foot, which actually works out perfectly. I found that the footprint for a reel is about six inches by eight inches. And so a, a nice divisible factors there of 24 and 48. Um, and so the, the board was about six bucks or so at Home Depot. Um, the clips, the 3M command strips, these are uh, two pound um, and that's plenty enough for any fishing reel. Um, so just some basic drywall screws are fine. I've got 35 pound um, drywall um, anchors there and I'm gonna use six of them on this board just uh, just to kind of be sure and, and you probably don't you probably could get away with four but I'm gonna use six um, some washers to put uh, on the front side of the board just a little bit extra secure there and then one thing I'm doing in my situation is I've got these little rubber feet they actually go on the bottom of chairs um, but my wall here in the basement has got a very heavy stipple to it um, it's very uneven and it just kind of helps keep the board a little more flat and even and kind of grip a little bit better um, so I went ahead with that. I don't know that you really need it, but it's just something that I elected to do. Uh, as far as tools, a uh, rubber mallet for pounding in the drywall anchors, um, a screwdriver, a pencil to mark things up, and then a tape measure. And uh, that's about it. Uh, that's about all that you need there. I did go with a little bit longer screws. I went with one and a half inches versus what came in the thing, but uh, basically some number eight uh, drywall screws, one and a half inch uh, is what I'm using here. So um, that's the hardware setup. And like I said, this is all uh, about 60 bucks or so, and, uh, and you're ready to go. So the board itself is uh, four feet by two feet and it actually works out perfectly. I found the footprint for a reel is about six inches this way and about eight inches uh, on the vertical. And so what I did already to save some time is I marked off six inch segments across the board this way. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and mark off eight inch segments um, going up and down. So now what I've made here is basically I've got space for, um, well, let's see, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we've got eight by three, we've got 24 spots for, for reels here. Um, I don't know that I'll need all those for my spinning reels, but who knows, maybe it's an excuse to buy some more. Next, uh, we're gonna drill some holes on this board here. Um, I'm electing to use uh, six screws into the wall. You may not need that many. Um, they're 35 pound anchors, so you probably want, aren't gonna need that many, but just for secure reasons, and so the board doesn't wobble too much. I'm gonna go ahead with uh, with uh, three across the bottom, three across the top. Just to give me an estimate, I put a little washer there, I'm gonna mark a hole in the middle of it, um, and then I'm gonna use that to uh, just send my drill through. All right, so we've got our board marked up. We've got six inch by eight inch blocks. We've got 24 of those ready for 24 reels, and I've drilled six holes, uh, one in each corner and then two in the center. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hold it up to the wall. Um, might need a second hand for that. Um, and I'm going to use a marker to kind of mark through the holes to know exactly where I want to put this board. So that's our next task here. So probably want a Sharpie for that one. All right, so one advantage I kind of have here having done this already once is I've already got it lined up to my previous one that I did. Um, so what I did is I just borrowed one of my wife's probably pretty expensive art markers, long, thin one. And I'm just marking a hole right through here, right onto the... Uh, right onto the wall. And um, I'm gonna use that for drilling my holes. And so now we've got six marks on the wall. 
um, and we can just uh, drill accordingly. Now, um, if you don't have that advantage, um, of course you have to just take some measurements with the tape measure and uh, and set up your uh, set up your measurements and be able to drill your holes accurately. All right, so the next step then, of course, is to uh, is to drill our holes. Um, I do have a, a hammer drill, and so I'm going to use that because I've got a cement uh, cement wall here in the basement. Obviously, um, if you don't have a cement wall, you don't need a hammer drill. Um, I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't damage anything. And uh, let's go to the first one. Alright, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, it's kind of particular to my situation, as you can see here on the wall here, it's a pretty heavy stipple, it's very irregular, there's some, a lot of bumps and things like that. So to kind of compensate for that, in my case, I'm going to put these little uh, rubber, I guess they're, they're rubber feet for the bottom of uh, chairs and such, I'm going to put those on there. Um, the way I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue them on there for now, um, eventually they'll get sandwiched in between the washer, um, or the board and the wall, but I'm just going to glue them on there for now. A little bit of super glue is fine. So I'm going to set it on there and then I'm going to use a, a screw just to kind of make sure that it's centered uh, in the hole there. All right, so I've got them all set up here. I've got a uh, rubber uh, bumper essentially in, in each corner here. The screws right now are just placeholders. Obviously those are going to come out. They got to go the other direction into the wall, but they're just a placeholder there while the glue is uh, drying to just kind of make sure it's the, the, uh, the rubber bumper there stays centered. Uh, on the hole. Um, next thing to do is we're going to go ahead and tap in the drywall anchors into each of these um, and then we'll be ready to put the board up. Alright, so we've got our six drywall anchors in. We're ready to hang this guy now. I've started this screw uh, through the hole already, so I'm going to start with the center um, just so we can uh, have something to some support there in the middle. All right, everything is tightened up now. Um, last step is to hang up the clips. And honestly, this is probably the part that takes the longest out of this whole project. Um, we've got to go through each and each square. What I try to do is center it in the top of each square that I made you know, six inches by eight inches or so, and then the reels will just hang from these clips. These are two pound clips. Um, like I said, probably the most, uh, the longest part of this project and, and probably the most tedious part as well. We got them all up here. Like I said, the most tedious part, the most expensive part of this of this product is these hooks here. But they're all up here. I've um, got them spaced uh, uh, what we need, six inches by eight inches. I'm gonna throw a few stickers on just for some uh, or for some color to add to it, and make it look nice. Um, and then I'm gonna start putting uh, putting some reels on it. So we'll uh, we'll get this all set up and we'll show you what the finished product looks like. Here's our finished product. Uh, got a whole wall full of loose reels here. Not sure there's a whole lot of prettier sights in a basement. So, um, got all my spinning reels here. Got my bait casters up there. Whole project, like I said, somewhere around an hour if you've got all the tools and everything ready to go. Um, cost wise, about 60 bucks or so, and um, real great way to organize your tackle and have a visual of what. Uh, of what you've got. As I said, with the whiteboard, you can mark things and make note of what kind of line you had on it. Um, and it gets uh, gets clutter out of the way from your uh, from your drawers and your uh, and your shelves. So um, I've really found this to be a really cool little project. It's been a lot of fun making it, and um, hope it's helpful for you.